are focused on trying to solve the mapping and localization problem for level four, level five autonomy. That, uh, that's uh, you know, fully autonomous vehicles, vehicles where basically the passengers are free to you know, use their time however they choose. They're entire, completely out of the loop. We believe that our focus really has to go beyond the map. And to that end, we offer a suite of uh, software-enabled services that integrate directly into the vehicle uh, that make use of this, uh, the sensor suite on the vehicle to both create and update the map. Now, those sensors, uh, as, you, as you might imagine, for a completely autonomous vehicle generally include a LiDAR, uh, two cameras at least, uh, a GPS IMU, and a radar. Now, our reference architecture, uh, our development vehicles make use of the HDL32 line LiDAR, uh, and it was used to generate uh, the images you see here. And so the primary differentiator between us and some of the other HD maps that are out there is you see things like that, right? That's what they consider to be an HD map, a lot of our competition, right? Where it's just basic, basic geometry, lines, signs, signals, and things like that, right? And it's, it can be very precise, but to enable truly safe L4 autonomy, we believe you have to take it a step further. We include something called an occupancy map where we actually break down the, the 3D environment and build it back up with a series of cubes. Cubes that can be as small as, a, as five centimeters. And we can tell whether or not uh, anything occupies that space, and let's say that five centimeter cube. Uh, that allows us to offer a world-class localization solution in the vehicle, right? So highly precise and making use of a Validine sensor like an HDL32 uh, spinning at let's say 20 Hertz. Um, we can localize the vehicle down to, let's say, less than 10 centimeters because we've used that same sensor to build a sub five centimeter map um, and provide that localization result, answering the question to the vehicle, where am I? Uh, up to 100 times per second. And so really what that does, because our services, we're a soft, you know, software enabled services integrating directly into the vehicle, allowing the vehicle to make use of its existing sensor suite, which generally inc includes a Validine sensor, um, that re uh, removes the need for a costly uh, survey fleet, which, I mean, accounts generally for more than half of the cost of uh, a map creation. But beyond that, right, um, we also offer, where our real differentiation begins, is we offer the, the vehicle the means to efficiently consume the map, right? So I already talked a little bit about the localization service. We also provide direct uh, support to the, the vehicle's perception system, as well as the planning and control system. So our goal is to make sure that the, the map and its derivatives are never a blocker to our partner's L4 autonomy, L4, L5 development, right? Our solution, because it deploys directly onto our customers' fleets, actually allows, gives them complete control. Uh, they, can, they control the coverage, they control the update uh, frequency of the map, um, the map is then customized specifically to their planning and control system using you know, a set of APIs, easily customizable APIs. So essentially, uh, their planning and control system can consume the map how it chooses to consume the map. Um, it's, it's entirely theirs, right? That, that those in-vehicle services couple with our um, back, back end infrastructure, which is designed to be cloud agnostic. So it can deploy a uh, private cloud, public cloud, whatever our partners choose. Uh, and, and also a flexible data ownership model. So really it's our customers' sensors, uh, their data, their map. Uh, they can choose to share it if they'd like or they can keep it private. Um, so really it's, it's just unparalleled control in terms of a mapping and localization solution. Sort of brand new to the market, an entirely new mapping and localization paradigm, really done as a service. So I guess with that, I'll pause for a second and see if anybody has any questions uh, specifically about the deep map service or maybe how we, we make use of uh, Velodyne sensors. The coverage of the map itself is, so if you think about how level four, level five vehicles are generally deployed uh, in today's market, um, it's going sort of city by city and, and it's uh, by, my test fleets, right? So we're working with small test fleets generally. Uh, and, and so their, their focus is really robo taxi uh, and sort of delivery services, uh, mobility as a service, right? Um, so those, those vehicles generally operate in a geo-fenced area. Uh, so we can basically build a map, let's say. So at DeepMap, one of our key selling points is we say, we can integrate into your vehicle in less than 30 days. We can map a medium-sized city in six weeks, and then we can provide you um, a world-class localization solution instantaneously thereafter. It's a software solution, so generally you're learning the same architecture across your fleet. 
So if we can do one, we can do them all. Yes, complete, complete 3D, right? So again, breaking down the environment, 3D environment, and then sort of rebuilding it with cubes. We monitor for sort of dynamic objects are also whether or not the, the static environment has changed. And we can detect the changes to the static environment. And we also understand because we're running live localization in the vehicle, how that change will impact the vehicle's ability to safely operate. So we can then prioritize that update. Does this need to happen immediately? Or does it need, or can it wait a day or two days, right? Let's say there's some construction and construction closes a lane. Um, so we can basically detect a, a lane closure um, and, and communicate that with all the other relevant vehicles pretty efficiently, right? So it could be something like that, something that simple could be communicated and, and a map update uh, to all the other relevant vehicles in the area um, that that might have an impact too. It could be about the size of a, a regular SMS message. Announced earlier this week uh, with a partnership with SAIC, um, a, a large, one of the largest OEMs in China, um, we are currently also exhibiting in Honda's booth and working with them. Another public partner of ours is Ford. Um, and then we're also working with a handful of other OEMs and startups that I cannot publicly disclose at this time. So this is actually a map for machines, right? This is a, for a, the, the fully autonomous vehicle. It's for, for it, right? That's, that's, who cons that's what consumes this map. It's not a map for people. It's actually a map for machines. So, and it's at, it's at a much finer grain of detail. We're talking sub 10 centimeter relative accuracy because we need to facilitate um, sub 10 centimeter localization. So to answer the question, where am I to the vehicle? And that question needs to be answered in the form of uh, latitude, longitude, altitude, roll pitch yaw. That's six degrees to freedom. And it needs to be done in less than 10, uh, less than 10 centimeters relative accuracy. So we have to be 10 centimeters accurate uh, for, location. for location, yes. Uh, so, out, yes, outside of the GPS, correct. Because GPS oftentimes will have, let's say, 10 meters or five meters of drift. And if, if your car uh, is driving itself and, and it's five meter, thinks it's five meters away from where it actually is, that could be truly catastrophic. But again, our goal is to enable truly safe L4 autonomy. No RTK to blow the map. So our current reference architecture on our development cars um, is we use one HDL32 line from Velodyne. Uh, we use two, two cameras, uh, mono cameras, calibrated to stereo, and a GPS, a very simple, inexpensive GPS IMU, no RTK. Yeah, we have, we have several ways of, of doing that. Uh, most important, of course, is relative accuracy, but we encourage our, our customers and partners to make use of something like an RTK, the post-process data, to provide a, an independent means of measurement. Um, otherwise, we also offer sort of proprietary means to measure our map using some tools that we have internally. What our reference architecture, what our development vehicles are meant to do is sort of mimic the typical sensor suite found on a level four, level five autonomous vehicle, right? So that's what we build on, but then ultimately we deploy our, uh, our software into our partner's vehicles, and then that makes their, their vehicles, their fleet, uh, capable of making use of their existing sensor suite to, to build and update their own maps. So that way the maps uh, and the localization service scales organically with the fleet. How do we make use of dynamic layers or how do we interact with sort of a standard definition navigation map? So basically from a, with a st we, we sort of abstract ourselves entirely from a standard definition map. That's not really useful at all uh, for, let's say, a highly autonomous vehicle or an autonomous vehicle, um, other than to say I'm here, like this is my origin and this is my destination. So we can take that information and one of, our, one of the capabilities of our APIs is to actually translate sort of that origin and that destination into uh, a high depth, we'll call it a high definition route, so right down to the centimeter of where the vehicle would need to change lanes or like the trajectory it would need to take through a, a, any of the given intersections that, you might, that it might come across traversing from its origin to its destination. Our, our back-end infrastructure is designed to be cloud agnostic. 
So we can deploy to our uh, customers and partners uh, private cloud if they choose, or we can operate in any sort of public cloud out there, uh, AWS, Azure, et cetera, et cetera. And that couples with a sort of a flexible data ownership model, right? So because it's our customers' vehicles, our customer sensors, it's ultimately their data, it's their map, so th and they can choose to share it if they choose, if, if they'd like, or they can keep it for, for themselves, right? So it's, it's, it's entirely up to them, flex flexible data ownership model, and cloud agnostic backend. So the bulk of the data is stored on the cloud, and of course then there's a small cache uh, on the vehicle uh, that is needed for vehicle safe operation given its, you know, its current geofenced area. Yes, hypothetically that, that is true, but let's, let, the current deployments are, are operating in small sort of geofenced areas. And so you can store basically that, that full area quite easily okay, with no problem. In the future, in the real world, right? Correct, yeah. in, in the future, in the real world, uh, the, the, it would sort of update on the fly, yeah. If you think about how level four, level five deployments are currently, it's, 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 it's in test, right? It's in beta or even alpha in some cases, right? So a lot of times these are private test facilities or small, uh, a few square miles inside of a city where you're offering uh, robotic taxi services or some sort of delivery service or like a, a prototype of, of such a service. So that's what we mean by small, right? It's a, it's a, a few square miles generally at a time, uh, maybe let's say 10, 10 square miles, which could be, you know, 20 to 30 to maybe 50 lane miles if you wanted to think about it in those. That, which is obviously quite a quite a small amount of data easily stored on a vehicle right now. Right, so what you're seeing here is uh, basically a representation of what we call an occupancy map, uh, or uh, which is generated from a point cloud. And then the color, of course, comes from the camera, right? We use a sensor fusion approach, so we're fusing LiDAR and camera data uh, to generate this map. So it's quite quite small, actually, um, but we're not gonna we're not publicly disclosing data size at this time. Let's say much 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 smaller than Gigabit. <laughs> much 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 smaller.